Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Allie Hilding, and I work in the admissions office as the assistant director of admissions. And I'm here today to talk with our assistant director of public interest in the Minnesota Law Career Center, Ann Sexton. Ann does all things public interest, and we get so many questions every year from admitted students about all things public interest. And so we just thought it'd be great to connect and answer some frequently asked questions that you all have and just put some faces to names. So hello, Anne. Hello, Allie. Thanks for that <laughs> lovely introduction. I'm really excited to talk about the various public interest job supports and opportunities that we have here at Minnesota Law, because there are many. There are many. So let's just dive right in. How would you describe public interest and what sorts of jobs are under the public interest umbrella? That's such a great question. So public interest really is this extremely broad topic and it encompasses many, many practice areas. And it focuses more for us at least on who you're working for. So working for nonprofits or foreign equivalents, government agencies at any level, tribal, state, federal, and many more employers. These organizations could be located here in Minneapolis, near Mondale Hall, across the country, in other countries, in rural or urban settings. Um, and the work is just, it's fascinating. So we have students doing the most interesting things in the most interesting locations every year, whether that's working in a public defender's office in Alaska, or with the Department of Justice Office of International Affairs in DC, or legal aid in Chicago. Really the type of work you can do is, is endless. It's more about who you're working for. That sounds amazing. And no wonder so many students are interested in it because you can really go a lot of different ways. So I know there are a lot of ways that your office, fellow career counselors, uh, support students interested in public interest. So can you describe some of those supports? Yeah, absolutely. So we really pride ourselves on really strong public interest programming and education on a variety of public sector topics. And that could be things from public interest job searching. How do you how do you find that public interest job uh, to loan repayment and forgiveness programs, um, kind of the whole gamut. But one thing that I think makes our office really unique is that as a 1L, you're assigned a specific career counselor and you work with that career counselor throughout your law school career. So you're able to forge a really deep relationship with one another that will allow you to really have a tailored individual career professional development path. And I think that really makes us stand out from other structures where maybe depending on the time of year, day of the week, time of the day, you might just get matched with a different career counselor that's available. But, but we really pride ourselves in the relationships we build with our students because we do have assigned career counselors for each student and it's pegged right at admissions. So we really, really like that model. That relationship building piece is so important. And that's really what students want. They want a person to go to and help them and kind of build that relationship all three years. So that's that's so amazing that you all have that kind of in your toolbox too. So I know since law school is a professional school, um, employment is really at the top of everyone's mind. Um, how are they going to get into the legal field? When? Where? So talk to us about how the Career Center helps public interest students with all things employment. Yeah, wow. Okay, this I could go on and on and on but I'll try to keep this a highlight reel. <laughs> so besides, of course, we do application reviews for you. We help you develop your job search strategies. We do mock interviews or practice interviews with you. We have really strong public interest employer relationships. So every year we have public interest employers participating in our recruiting programs that are just for Minnesota law students. Every year we're sending students to public interest job fairs across the country. A couple big ones are Equal Justice Works in DC every year, MPLICC in Chicago every year, but there are many more, some public defense focused ones, um, some geographic focused ones. And then of course we have public interest employers 
from across the country directly recruiting from us throughout the year. And so that means that you as a Minnesota law student will see those postings on a job board that is only available to you. Um, so we really, again, pride ourselves with our relationships, not only with our students, but with our public interest employers as well. Talk to us, Anne, about the financial support that students may receive if they work in public interest areas. Yeah, that's such a big deal. I know if I, you know, try not to block out law school for me many, many, many moons ago, summer funding in particular was a make it or break it whether or not I could work in the public sector when I was in law school. So Minnesota law does offer several summer funding opportunities for students to help alleviate the financial burden that's often associated with a public interest career. And so those are offered through our office, the Career Center, and then the Human Rights Center at the law school also has a Minnesota law student specific funding available. And no year are we able to fund everyone who seeks funding, but we are so proud of the number of students that we are able to support and fund each summer. And another kind of financial piece that I think is really cool is we have a membership through Access Max that provides free, confidential, and individualized uh, financial counseling to our students and alumni. So if you're coming in and you have questions about what does this mean in my loan document and things like that, you can set up a free appointment to talk with an expert and they'll walk you through it. And you can do that again when you're a recent grad and maybe now your loan status has changed and you have new questions. Um, so that's a really great service. And I think especially important for our public sector students and grads um, to really have that financial support from, from an expert service. Um, so I, I think that's another kind of component to how we support our public interest students financially. That's wonderful. I know Access Max is has so many resources for students. And honestly, I don't think that's utilized enough from students. No. So that's such a great resource. Talk to us about uh, practical skills. So in law school, students get a ton of theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge, but sometimes in public interest, interest careers, there's a different kind of practical knowledge they need because it's such a niche market sometimes. Mm -hmm. So how do students gain practical skills for public interest careers at Minnesota Law? Oh, that's such a good question. And Honestly, I think every year I'm surprised to learn a new opportunity that that we offer. So there, there are so many. There are many, many ways that you're going to develop your practical skills to succeed in the public interest legal field, from working with our many centers and institutes, serving on a journal, working in one of our, what are we up to 26 clinics now, um, or doing a field placement, which is working for course credit while working for a nonprofit or government agency. Um, all of those are going to be great ways to build your skills, get that practical experience, dig into the community, serve real clients, but some really exceptional things, uh, really unique things that we offer at Minnesota Law is our remote semester program, our SAKES public interest residency program, our civic scholars initiative, and our Rubina postgrad fellowship. I think those are sometimes uh, not more important, but people find maybe a little bit more exciting um, than some of the day-to-day -day things that you can do kind of throughout your law school career. Let's get into some of those a little bit. Um, especially about two thirds of our students come from outside of Minnesota to be students here. And then students can go anywhere post-graduation. And so sometimes students are wondering, during a semester, can I be somewhere else? So talk to us about the remote semester program. Yes, and this is the perfect fit for those students. So the remote semester program allows our three L's to do a deep dive into practice before you've even graduated. So as a third year law student, either during your fall or spring semester, you work nearly full time with a nonprofit or a foreign equivalent, or again, any government agency. And while you're working there, located anywhere in the world, you are earning a full-time credit load toward law school graduation. So it doesn't set you behind. It's not an extra semester. It's built into 
the design of how you're going to finish your credits to graduate. And we have truly had students come up with the most unique placements really all over the world. We had somewhat in inner city law in Los Angeles. We had a student last spring at a nonprofit in Mexico working to support a legal clinic there because that was really meaningful work to that individual. Um, so it is just a really fun opportunity if you want to be in a different market, if you want an adventure, <laughs> um, or you just are ready to start practicing and really dig into developing those skills on a more substantive basis, that is a great program for you. It's like a, the public interest version of studying abroad. It is, it is. So, so remote semester, and then we also have the SAKES public interest residency program. So talk to us about how that's different. Yes, good question. Not to be confused with the SAKES public interest residency program. Under that program, which is more based on our local employers. So the remote semester is the, you can go anywhere in the world. The SAKES residency program is a little bit more close to home at Mondale Hall. So under this program, our 3L students work full-time their th entire 3L year, again, earning course credits to graduate on time within that three-year time window. And they work with a local nonprofit or government agency. And then at graduation, they are guaranteed full-time paid legal employment for one year with that agency. And so it is a phenomenal way to get into some of these more competitive nonprofits and government offices right out of law school. Um, and, and I'll say too, um, I believe all of our students who have done this program have had the option to stay on after that year concludes of employment, post-grad employment. And so we've had students with our local gender justice nonprofit here, which is a really popular one, the Minnesota Attorney General's Office, Wisconsin Public Defenders, and, and a variety of others. Um, but it is just a very unique partnership. And again, just speaks to the strong relationships we have with our public interest employers. Those sound like amazing opportunities. And I think the surprising thing is, those aren't the only opportunities <laughs> for students. So talk to us about any other post-grad public interest opportunities that are specific for Minnesota law students. Yeah, so that isn't all. I feel like Bob Barker on The Price is Right. That isn't all, like, you know, behind this door. So we also have the Rubina Postgrad Fellowship, which, as Ali mentioned, is just for Minnesota law students. This is a highly competitive fellowship program um, that funds a one-year legal or policy fellowship and again, at a nonprofit or foreign equivalent or government agency at any level, if you're seeing a theme here, um, and students create these themselves. And so they really get to decide, I need to start in this nonprofit and this is going to launch my career. And this is again, a way to break into some of these really competitive organizations or government offices that don't often higher entry level attorneys or don't necessarily have the funding to hire entry level attorneys. So you get to launch your career at these impressive places while being paid um, and building those connections and all sorts of things. So recently we've had someone at the United Nations, the UN Women Peace and Security Division, Right now we have someone at the Brennan Center at NYU. Again, the placements can vary. They've been all over the world and they're really unique to the student's interest. Again, they get to build out this competitive fellowship application and make it their own. And it's, it's really fun. <laughs> it's really fun to review those applications. And this has been so insightful. Thank you so much to you and the rest of your Career Center colleagues for all the work that you do for Minnesota Law students. If students have questions or have any kind of follow up for the Career Center, who should they contact? They should contact our generic email, which is at lawcareers at um.edu. And I bet we could put that near this video if, if when this gets posted so you don't have to remember that and then it will get routed to the appropriate person in our office so you don't have to remember too much other than just 
shoot law careers uh, an email and then we'll take it from there. But this was lovely, Ali. Thank you for setting this up. And for anyone watching, I'm really excited to see you in the fall and start diving into your public interest career journey with you.